inviting me to, to talk for, for the, the graduation program of Federal University of São Carlos. And I, I choose a, as the subject of my talk to show you a, a, a series of works that we, we developed here uh, to FAO during the last decade or more or less during the last decade concerning uh, uh, some studies of the Bose-Einstein condensation in different uh, uh, low dimensional uh, system, including some com complex networks that, that uh, deals with uh, uh, some basic aspects of this phenomenon. So as uh, you told me that uh, the, the audience was to be composed by uh, students and, and professors of the program, I chose this subject because it, it involves some basic uh, statistical mechanics and condensed matter issues. And also uh, it, it uh, address some specific points that are not well uh, stressed during the usual uh, courses that we do during our graduation. So here is a brief outline of what I'm going to discuss with you today. So I will start by uh, just summarizing some basic aspects related to the Bose-Einstein condensation for the particular simple case of ideal gas Bose-Einstein condensation. So during my entire talk, I'm, I'm, I will uh, be focused in the ideal gas system, no interactions at all. So after this very basic one slide uh, introduction for the subject, I will, uh, I will drive my attention to the Bose-Einstein condensation in low dimensional non-homogeneous systems that will be uh, classified in mainly three uh, class of systems. Systems with uh, disorder, so non-homogeneity arising from disorder, from defects in the in, in spatial, in, in, in space, in the Another class of uh, systems being uh, complex networks. So I'll show you some Bose-Einstein condensation in graphs and also in hierarchical lattices. And in the end, I will show you Bose-Einstein condensation in chains with long range uh, hoppings, power law decay hoppings that allows us to stress some unconventional finite size scaling characteristics that are also not addressed in even in in courses devoted to critical phenomena phase transitions and critical phenomena and and then i i will summarize so in the middle of my talk i will uh, give some preliminary uh, summary and conclusions so we can stop and, and, and address some questions if there are some. And then I will do this, the final part of the, the talk that is more related to this uh, dependence of the, the characteristics of the Bose-Einstein condensation as a function of the effective dimensionality or spectral dimensionality of the network that we are we are uh, studying. So let let's start. So here I summarize some some features of the Bose-Einstein condensation of free bosons. 
so called ideal gases. So in, for bosons, bosons obey the well-known Bose-Einstein distribution for indistinguishable particles that we know that the number, the average number of particles that can be found in a state I follows this distribution, the Bose-Einstein distribution. So where, where A, E, I, E here is the energy of the state I and mu is the typical chemical potential. So what we learn in, in basic uh, statistical mechanical courses that if we have bosons, but whose number is not conserved, okay? like for example, uh, in phonons or photons, the chemical potential is zero and the average number of particles in any level goes to zero as the temperatures is decreased to, to, to zero, to the ground state because the number of particles is not conserved, what happens is then when, when you uh, decrease the temperature, the number of particles uh, decreases continuously until there is no particle at the ground state. So now nothing much uh, interesting uh, happens for this class of uh, uh, systems on which the number of bosons does not conserve. When the number of particles is conserved, the, the, the picture is quite distinct. For example, the chemical potential at low temperatures, it equals to the ground state energy. And this happens in a finite temperature range if the density of states goes to zero at the the band, the, the band edge, the bottom band edge. If, you, if the energy is just a, a kinetical energy, this, the ground state has zero energy. And a condition for this condensation of free bosons to occur is that the density of states has to go to zero at the bottom of the energy band. When this happens, a finite fraction of the particles occupy the ground state. So there is a finite range of temperatures for which the ground state, it is occupied by a finite fraction of the particles of the system. The other states are occupied by, by, but for a finite number of particles, not a finite fraction, not for by, by a, a macroscopic number of particles only the ground state can be occupied by a macroscopic number of particles below uh, a finite temperature value. So this condition is essential, that the ground is, that at the ground state or at the bottom of the energy band, the density of states has to go to zero for this condensation of particles in the ground state to take place. So for, uh, here we have the three different scenarios that we uh, learn in the basic statistical mechanical courses. That for three-dimensional systems, so for ideal gas, a bo uh, ideal gas of bosons in a three-dimensional uh, region, three-dimensional network, three-dimensional lattice, or, or a three-dimensional box, the best of states goes to zero at the bottom of the energy band as a square root of the energy. So a Bose-Einstein condensation can occur in three dimensions. For a two-dimensional lattice, the density of state is, uh, it, it goes to a constant at the ground, at, at the bottom of the energy band. It goes to a constant. So this is a marginal case for which Bose-Einstein condensation occurs just at t equals zero. And in one-dimensional systems, the density of states diverge at the bottom of the energy band, diverge as, a, as one of the square root of the energy. 
So in one dimensional, in one dimensional systems, we have no Bose-Einstein condensation. So this is a very, in some, in some courses, it is in the, in a exercise uh, list or in the exams, one question that is devoted to demonstrate that no Bose-Einstein condensation of the ideal gas takes place in two-dimensional systems. This is very traditional. If you do not uh, demonstrate this, you should. Because the very, very uh, standard basic question. But this, this, uh, these laws for the form that the best of states behaves at the bottom of the energy band in two dimension, in one dimensional, two dimensional, and three dimensional systems. We, we, we also learned to demonstrate them both in statistical mechanics courses and also in solid state courses, but they are, uh, they are restricted for uh, ideal gas in a box or an ideal gas in homogeneous lattices. So if you have some, if we have some degree of non-homogeneity, the behavior of the dust of state is quite distinct from these ones. And this is well known for over 50 years. For example, in this uh, very seminal paper from Lottinger and Sai, in 1973, they already have shown that Bose-Einstein condensation takes places in one-dimensional models, but in the presence of random impurities, in the presence of disorder. So if you, you have disorder, that there is Bose-Einstein condensation even in one dimension, and the critical temperature for this condensation to take place depends on the on the density of impurities, on how many impurities you have in the system. As higher is the degree of inhomogeneity, as higher the degree of uh, number of impurities, higher is the the critical temperature, and they could demonstrate both the low disorder and high disorder behavior of this condensation temperature in this one dimensional uh, random, let's say, random model. Why this occurs? Why this transition, this, this Bose-Einstein uh, condensation transition takes place in one dimension in the presence of impurities? It's quite simple, the, the, the argument. Uh, this is well discussed in this paper from, from 2004. And what they basically show is that when you have impurities disorder, the, the Van Hoff singularity that we have in the, the band edges, that, that divergence that has in the band edges, are rounded, rounded, because we have no no translational symmetry in the presence of impurities, so we can cannot have a Van Hoff singularities. They are rounded, and the the dust of states develops what we call uh, leaf sheet tails, and these leaf sheet tails are exp exponential. So in the presence of disorder, the band edges changes from a divergent singularity to the development of uh, exponentially decaying tails. So the dust of states actually goes to zero exponentially in the presence of disorder. 
And this is the main reason for the emergence of this transition induced by defects, induced by disorder. So after, uh, after these several uh, works have been devoted to study this Bose-Einstein condensation in the presence of disorder due to this, to the emergence of these leaf sheet tails. So here I just uh, collected some papers if you have interested to, to give a look for this Bose-Einstein condensation in one dimensional disordered systems some physical review letters papers and also this physical review a paper so uh, uh, our first contribution in this uh, in this subject was through this paper in 2010 so one decade ago where we addressed the the, the whole of correlations in the disorder di distribution Why we, we had interest in this problem, it was motivated by an uh, even uh, older paper that we had uh, published here in our group, showing that the correlations in the disorder distribution can uh, induce the emergency of extended states in one dimensional system. So the, the Anderson theory of localization, it, uh, it uh, gives us a very interesting, important result that for one dimensional systems with disorder, all one particle eigenstates are exponentially localized. And we have demonstrated in, in 1997, 1998, that when we introduce uh, scale-free or long-range correlations in the disorder distribution, we may uh, stabilize extended states as a transition from disorder to non-disordered system. So we had the, the feeling that when we introduce long range correlations, the behavior of the band of, of the energy band, the, the, the density of states, was going to change from the typical presence of leaf sheet tails that allows the Bose Einstein condensation to occur to a more regular density of states for which uh, Bose-Einstein condensation could not take place. So what we did, we, we introduced the correlations in the disorder distribution in a one-dimensional system and started the, the, the possibility of Bose-Einstein condensation. This, the, the simplest way that we have to introduce uh, well-controlled correlations is to consider the the potential that the particle will feel along the chain to have a spectral decomposition like this. So this is a spectral composition. So this cosine here, uh, uh, considered all the uh, all components with different uh, uh, wave numbers or different uh, wavelengths with a random phase. So the random randomicity is introduced through this random phase here but with amplitudes that decay as a power law of the wave number. So here we have some uh, uh, examples of the potential that we generate for different values of this typical exponent here, alpha. So when, when alpha is equal to zero, we have the usual uncorrelated distribution uh, for the potential energies. And when alpha starts to grow, we develop correlations in the disorder distribution. It becomes long range correlated with no typical correlation length. 
It's a scale-free kind of correlation. So instead of considering this, uh, this potential here, we, we perform the uh, binarization procedure. So when, the poten when in this series, the potential was above zero, we considered it to be one half and below zero to be minus one half. So from here to here, we perform the bi uh, binarization procedure. So for alpha equal to zero or uh, 0 0.5, for example, here, in a case of weak, but long range correlate, uh, correlated disorder. So we have this kind of uh, sequence of potentials. So in some sites, the particle feels a potential one half, and in some sites, a potential of minus one half. And as this uh, exponent alpha grows, the potential becomes more persistent with longer segments with an equal potential. Here is the spectral, the spectral distribution of this kind of uh, potential showing that it is scale-free, the case as a power law of the wave vector K. So with this potential, we computed the all eigenstates and used the, 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 the standard protocol to, to study the thermodynamic of uh, ideal both gas in uh, occupying a lattice with this kind of disorder to, to, to investigate the possibility of uh, uh, the emergence of a Bose Einstein condensation. So here is what we found for the integrated density of states. So we have for small values of alpha, so small uh, weak correlations that we have an exponential decay of the density of state, but for stronger correlations, the integrated density of states goes to zero, but faster than linearly, which points to a divergence of the own density of states. So this was the first hint that uh, transition from, from having a condensation for non having a condensation would uh, certainly emerge when we increase the, the degrees of correlations. So then you, we use the, the traditional thermo, uh, statistical mechanics approach for the thermodynamics of this ideal Bose gas. And we computed the, the fraction of particles occupying the ground state for different uh, values of the correlation exponent alpha. And you can see clearly here that for alpha equals to zero, so the, the, the pure uncorrelated uh, disorder the potential, this fraction is finite at low temperatures and goes to zero at a characteristic transition point. But when alpha increases, this, transi the, this transition temperature decreases and eventually goes to zero for strong correlations. So here is a, is a summary of what we found. We computed the critical the condensation temperature, the critical temperature for the Bose-Einstein condensation as a function of this correlation exponent, showing clearly that this transition, the, the transition temperature decreases and goes to zero here in this inset we performed a kind of finite size scaling analysis to show that the transition temperature at alpha equals to one goes to zero in the thermodynamic limit. So if this typical uh, correlation exponent alpha is above unity, there is no Bose-Einstein condensation in this one dimensional disorder systems with long range correlations. And we could associate this, this critical value of alpha with some uh, characteristics, statistical characteristics 
of the, the correlated series. So after, uh, before this, this, the publication of this work, we had already uh, been studying this Bose-Einstein condensation, condensation of uh, ideal gas in other class of models having uh, power law test of states. And without having a underlying Hamiltonian, we just had made some, some very academic works uh, assuming, assuming that the density of states had some power law fractal-like aspect that was derived from some chaotic uh, low-dimensional systems. And in this paper here from 2005, we consider the, the, the integrated density of states eh, or the density of states or, the, or the, the possible energy levels of the systems, of the system to, to follow the rules of the logistic map and also from the circular map. These are two traditional maps used for for studying uh, nonlinear dynamical systems, that the main the main uh, uh, feature is that this this energy uh, this distribution of uh, values for x that was used that to to generate the series of uh, possible values of the eigenenergies. In the, in the critical point that you have a transition from regular to chaotic dynamical systems, just at the critical point, the, this distribution has a multifractal character, both in the logistic map and in the circular map. The main difference between the, the this distribution of uh, uh, energies is that for the logistic map, the integrated density of states that is shown here in a log-log scale, it goes to zero faster than linearly. I'm showing that uh, no Bose-Einstein condensation should occur if the spectrum of energies has this form. And for the circular map, the integrated density of states goes to zero slower than linearly. So open the possibility, opening the possibility of having a condensation. So we, we started the thermodynamic of a Bose-Einstein condensation that has the attractor, the critical attractor of the logistic map and the circular map as the spectrum of the energy, of the energy, to show that for the case of a spectrum derived from the logistic map, we have no condensation. So the fugacity, fugacity that's related to the chemical potential goes to to, to unity, so the, the chemical potential goes to zero. So in, just at t equal to zero for the logistic map, but it, it has a transition at a finite temperature for the, log, for the circular map. And here we, sh I, we showed the, how the density of particles condensed that in the ground state the, eh, is finite and goes to zero at a critical temperature that depends on a parameter that it, uh, controls the degree of nonlinearity of these maps. So this was a very academic example because we had no model Hamiltonian behind it, just a, a fake energy spectrum. Uh, another interesting class of uh, low dimensional systems 
or one-dimensional like systems that has a Bose-Einstein condensation is those that they are inhomogeneous but deterministic. So in this interesting paper from 2002, the authors showing the occurrence of a Bose-Einstein condensation in some very peculiar networks. And this one is a kind of a fishbone network. We have a one-dimensional chain, here a main one-dimensional chain, and that's crossed by other one-dimensional chains here. So you, you can see this kind of network as being composed by an infinite sequence of chains that are just coupled, 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 sorry, coupled in a single point. So without this single connection between the chains here, we would have an infinite set of decoupled linear chains for which we have no Bose-Einstein condensation. But just connecting this chain through a single point, through this fish backbone, a finite temperature Bose-Einstein condensation can occur. Excuse me, Marcelo. Yes. Uh, so this is the case, if, uh, even in the case of an infinite chain. Infinite chains, yes. And so you have infinite chains that are coupled in a single point. And uh, do you need to renormalize the coupling? I mean, because you can ask whether a single point of coupling is enough in, to in influence. This, in, this model, in this model, you do not have to renormalize. Okay, even this, with a finite model. Coupling, I will show you a model that you you need to renormalize the, the coupling. Okay. But in this case, what is the coupling? Uh, what kind of coupling do you have? Oh, I, I'm not hearing. Yeah. Your Can microphone you is. Can yeah, you hear me now? Better. Yes, yeah, now it's good. Oh, now. sorry. So what kind of coupling do you have there? So in the Hamiltonian... Just a hopping amplitude. It's just hot, just, just a, a one hopping, hopping term. A tight binding model. A tight oh, okay. binding model. Okay. A tight binding model along the chains and a tight binding first neighbor's coupling in one point of one chain to, to a single point in the, the other chain. So oh, it's a, a tight yeah. binding kind of modeling. Uh -huh. In this other uh, paper, from 2004, they studied this other network here. So we, ha we have a, a series of chains that all of them are, are coupled in a single point. So this is called a star network, star-shaped network. And the authors show, showed that also this network of chains coupled in a single point, but all of them coupled in a single point, this model allows for a Bose-Einstein condensation at a finite, finite temperature. And the transition temperature depends on the number of chains that are coupled. And so if, if, if you have just two same infinite chains coupled in a single point, this is ju just a line, so no transition temperature, no finite, uh, finite, uh, no condensation at a finite temperature. But you, if you have three chains, for example, this, just this uh, part of the network uh, composed of three semi-infinite chains, there is a transition at a finite temperature. And thus you couple more chains in this point, the transition temperature grows continuously. So how, now, now in this model, you have a, a series of semi-infinite chains coupled at a single point. This, in this network, the transition temperature is finite. So, uh, so we, 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 we got a, a, a very particular interest in this kind of uh, graphs, star-like graphs, and introduced in this paper. This paper was uh, the subject of a master de de degree uh, work 
of this student here, Vidal. And the network that we, we, we studied two networks in this paper. One that we call the uh, star and the other, the uh, wheel, infinitely ramified the uh, graphs. Now, what are these two graphs? The star graph was composed of this, the, this structure. We have a main uh, connection site here that couples with infinite, an infinite number of sites, but these sites are not con are not connected one to the other. So this is what we call it the star graph. One central site coupled to an infinite number of sites. So for this model, for this model to have a bounded energy state, a, a, an energy an energy band, we have to renormalize the hopping amplitude between the central site and the, the laterally attached site. For, so for this star graph, the hopping amplitude scales as one of the square root of the number L of sites that are laterally attached. And eventually we do the, in the at the end, the limit the thermodynamic limit of l going to infinite so this is what we call the, the star graph one central site coupled to infinite sites that are independent one of the other and the other graph that we studied was this wheel graph that's mainly the same of the star graph but the sites at the boundary here are Connected, connected, forming a ring with first neighbor hopping amplitudes. This first neighbor hopping amplitude we call the T, and the coupling between the ring and the central site needs to be renormalized to keep the energy band uh, bounded. So for the star graph, the Hamiltonian is like this. We have just the hopping between the central site zero and the neighboring site with a hopping amplitude that is renormalized. And for the wheel graph, the Hamiltonian is like this. We have the, the hopping amplitude between the central site and the, the ring sites and a one-dimensional tight bind model along the, the, the ring. This star graph in particular is, I, I like it very much because the, this Hamiltonian can be exactly diagonalized and you, you can find the full spectrum of this graph very easily. And the spectrum is quite, it's quite simple. We have one state that is that has energy equals to let me say we have one state with energy let, let me say exactly we have an infinite number of we have l minus one states that has zero energy zero. Most of the states are degenerated, they have zero energy. We have one state with energy negative and one state with energy positive. The, the structure of the spectrum is very simple. Most of the states are degenerated and we have one, one state below this, this degenerated level and one state above, just it. So all the thermodynamics is very, is very simple to obtain. We have just three, three energy states possible. So for example, the number of particles can be written considering this decomposition, this, this three level structure. We have one level that has a, a negative energy. We have most of the levels that has another energy that is epsilon. 
and an, an, an energy above the this degenerated level that is two epsilon you have one energy zero l minus one energy is equals to epsilon epsilon and one energy that's two epsilon so just not all thermodynamics can be derived from here for example the critical condensation temperature is very simple to obtain it's just to consider that we have no finite fraction and in the ground state so it just equals this term here n to this term here that's the main and the, the the main the all the states are in this band in this degenerated level so it just equals this term to this and we have you have the critical condensation temperature as a fraction of the fraction of particles that you have in the system so this small n here is the density of particles the number of bosons per site so the critical temperature is very simple to obtain analytically very simple indeed no you do not need even to make any integral and derivative nothing you can put uh, this exercise in a basic statistical mechanic course and all students will know how to do it <laughs> yeah and in the details of the computations are in this paper if you if you have interest to see so here is the number the, the fraction of particles condensated in the ground state here i scaled it by the by the critical temperature that depends on the 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 density of particles and the the the, the curve is very simple so all thermodynamics can be derived from here. In particular, you can compute the, the specific heat of this Bose-Einstein gas, the, the, this Bose gas. The specific heat will have a very simple uh, dependence on the temperature and on the density of particles. And it has this form here that is very, very uh, interesting to, to stress. It It's its shape so the specific heat goes to zero at the t equals to zero as we require for any the real the system the specific heat has to go to zero at the zero temperature so it grows until achieving a finite value at the critical temperature and above the critical temperature the specific heat is zero exactly zero so if you if you did the uh, uh, a good statistical mechanics course in the undergraduation or in the graduation program, you can recognize this aspect of the specific heat curve as the one that appears when you do a mean field description of critical phenomena. In mean field, so the in the eh? In mean field, in the mean field approach, the specific heat is discontinuous at the transition, and this it is exactly zero above the transition. So this star graph, these star graphs, give us the mean field description of the Bose-Einstein condensation. Is the analogous of the mean field description for the for the ferromagnetism, for example, for the case of above the both ice condensation. The specific heat is exactly zero above the transition, and it is discontinuous at the transition. For the wheel graph. So Marcel, just a quick question. So sure. okay, you have a mean field description, so the order parameter. It behaves as a 1D microscopic wave function as usual. So it would behave like a 1D BC. For instance, if you study the dynamics, you'd have like solitons, this kind of topological defects or? As a mean field, so for the transition, for the transition uh, aspect, be mean field like, means that we have. Uh, a high, an effective high dimensional system, not a one dimensional one. Oh, okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Likely an infinite dimensional system. Okay. 
Because in mean field, in mean field, the, the, the critical exponent and the critical behavior are typical of high dimensional systems. Mm -hmm. So this, this star graph is not one dimensional. It's effectively a high dimensional system because of this infinite uh, connectivity to the uh -huh. central site. Uh -huh. For the wheel graph, the picture is slightly different. You can also uh, diagonalize the Hamiltonian for the wheel graph. And the, and the picture is that the spectrum has this aspect. We have a, a band that is the usual energy band for the ring. So you, you all recognize this, this special relation here as the special relation for the one dimensional tight body model. And we have two other states that is decoupled from this band. One energy is below the bottom of this energy band and the other state is above the bottom of this energy band. So the main difference that appears now is that when you 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 write the total number of particles the states now associated to the ring are not degenerated and so you have to integrate uh, over this entire entire band but again the ground state is decoupled so the the decoupling of the ground state from this band is the essential feature that is needed to have a finite temperature Bose-Einstein condensation. So for the wheel graph, we can also write the condensed, uh, condensation fraction, the condition for having, uh, for finding the critical temperature, but now, now the critical temperature has to be obtained from this integral, uh, integral relation here between the density and the critical temperature. The specific heat can also be written analytically, but it will be written as, as a function of this integral. But these integrals can be made uh, numerically with no problem. What is the main difference between the thermodynamics of this wheel graph and the thermodynamics of the star graph? I will summarize it looking at this this plot for the specific heat. The specific heat now for the wheel graph is also discontinuous at the transition, but it's not zero above the transition. This is the main, the main thermodynamic uh, new feature that appears in the wheel graph as compared to the star graph. The specific heat is not zero above the condensation transition uh, temperature. It remains finite. It's discontinuous, but remains finite. And in, in when you study the phase transition and critical phenomena, you see this kind of behavior appearing when you start to include the correlations in your mean field approach. So that the very crude mean field approach has no correlations and the specific heat is zero above the transition temperature. And when you, you include it in some way correlations in the mean field transition, in the mean field approach, the specific heat uh, is not zero above the transition. So the the wheel, wheel graph is the a way to introduce correlations in the basic mean field star like network. And in both in both the net in both graphs, all thermodynamics is very very easy to obtain analytically. Most uh, at most numerically to have made to to make that the, the integrals. So I will summarize here the, the, the first message of my talk. I, I, I think I'm, I'm taking too long, eh, Roma. 
this would be the, the half of the talk. I, I will speed that now. So the main, the main, the main message for this first part: in homogeneities allows for Bose-Einstein condensation in low-dimensional systems. So if you introduce networks like star and wheel graphs, they allow for a very simple analytic approach for this Bose-Einstein condensation phenomena. And it's a way to introduce this in homogeneity. These exponents are mean field like, so the exponent for the order parameter vanishing at the critical temperature beta is equal to one, beta over nu is go is one half. So this transition has mean field like uh, aspect. And I, I believe that these kind of networks, star wheel graphs, can be used as a first zero order approach to try to understand the whole of interactions in this mean field, uh, in mean field description. So until now we have no, no interacting particles. And this is very simple to do. So we can use this as a zero order approach to make a, a perturbation theory, including interactions. May I ask you, you something? Because uh, I, I will need uh, maybe 15 minutes more. So sorry okay. for taking so too long. No, this is uh, nice. Uh, how, uh, okay, uh, physically, which kind of system, uh, in which kind of system can you get uh, this kind of uh, network uh, dynamics? Uh, I mean, is, it, is it really a toy model in itself? Or it's a, uh, in, in, in the paper that was introduced to the star uh, graph, they discuss a way to implement this kind of networks using optical lattices. So it's possible to, to generate this kind of tight bind models in a star geometry using optical lattices, but I, I confess that I did not look at it, at it with my, much detail. Okay. I, always, I, I also have a question. Yes. Yes, so um, about this star model, uh, you said that you see that there is a behavior which uh, seems like a behavior uh, of a higher dimensionality system. So um, my question is, because I have two questions actually. First one is, uh, is there a way to characterize the dimension by these thermodynamic properties, like uh, linking maybe to how other uh, homogeneous uh, n-dimensional systems would behave? And uh, this is the first question. So if you could uh, give like a number, this is the dimension. And the second question is, um, so I understand a little this idea of increasing the dimension because indeed uh, for a, let's say, normal system like a square lattice, when you increase the dimension, what you are increasing is the number of neighbors, each, um, the, the scaling of the number of neighbors with the distance to, uh, with the distance to, 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 to a single site. So this is more or less how I understand the, the, the dimension of the system. Now I see that when you put more, more, more sites on the star, you are increasing the number of uh, of, of neighbors that you have around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When when you when we start the uh, mean field approach, you can we can uh, we. we uh, but in you, but in, in our way, I mean, you you you. You also change the coupling, and I mean, in the end, uh, I don't know if you can do this forever. So I, I would say that the infinite limit is like more or less artificial, as I see. So I would uh, want you to comment on this. Yes. So in when when we start the uh, phase transition and critical phenomena, there has a very uh, academic but important model. That is the one on which the part all particles of your system interact with all particles. So you, you, you do, for, for example, a model, uh, a model for ferromagnets on which 
each spin of your system interacts equally to all other spins of the system. This would be like an infinite dimensional system. Yeah, that, so yes, that this is the infinite dimensional system. And what is demonstrated in this kind of model? It gives the thermodynamic of the mean field approach. So when you do a mean field like approach, you are act actually considering a system that has infinite dimensions. So this star graph and the wheel graph concerning this phase transition, this condensation transition, they are actually infinite dimensional networks. The so dimension is infinite in these two models. Okay. May I may I continue, Roma? Yes, yes, sure. Yes. Okay. So I will give you quickly for the other part. I think I will I will show just a couple of slides in this other presentation, and I will return to the old one. So more recently, we extended this study of Bose-Einstein condensation in complex networks. So in this paper, in collaboration with a colleague from Italy, Mauricio Serva, we studied the Bose-Einstein condensation in what is called the, the Apollonian network. The Apollonian network is a hierarchical network that is constructed uh, following the these recurrences. So we have a, a initial triangle here with three sites, P1, P2, P3. And we introduce in the center of this tri triangle a new one, the fourth one. And I continue it uh, recursively. So for each new triangle, we have now three triangles here uh, in, in blue sides, so we have this, I have this triangle, a smaller triangle here, this one here, and this one here. And in the center of each, of each triangle, I introduce a new site. So I form new triangles here, and I continue this indefinitely. So this is the Apollonian network that appears in some problems for space filling, two-dimensional space filling with the spheres. So we, we, we associated it to this uh, Apollonian network, a tight binding model, with an appropriated renormalization of the hopping amplitudes, né? considering the connectivity, the different connectivities of the sites. Né? We showed that the integrated density of states for this model could be uh, found found uh, numerically and analytically in a recursive way, we could demonstrate analytically that the spectral dimensionality of this Apollonian network is slightly below 4, 3.74, given exactly by this fraction here. So concerning the the, the behavior of the density of states at the border, this Apollonian network has a spectral dimensionality that is 3.74 something, slightly below four. For this, at this dimension, 3.74, we can have the exact values of the critical exponents for the Bose-Einstein condensation. So, for example, the specific heat will have a negative uh, exponent, the critical exponent alpha, slightly below zero, and the correlation length exponent will have uh, this exponent here that's close to one half. But we could also analytically, using recursive relations, to compute the fraction of particles condensated at the, at the ground state. We found the transition temperature. 
performed a finite size scaling analysis to compute uh, the critical exponents, and also raised the, the specific heat. And now the specific heat has a singularity at the transition. It's not discontinuous at the transition as it was in the mean field like graphs. It has a singularity with a negative uh, uh, correlation, uh, a negative critical exponent alpha. Excuse but me. Was, yes. Uh, I, I wanted to understand how this uh, network uh, actually works. I mean, if you want to increase the number of uh, connections, yes. uh, do you put... In each, in each triangle that you are seeing in this, in this mm -hmm. figure here, we introduce a new site at the center and connect okay. with the vertices. Okay. And How does this going on and on, on, on? Yes. How does the coupling uh, scale uh, when you okay you put your new points? Yes, so you have get to high the... scale the couplings. Okay. With the connectivity of the sides that they they are that are coupled by by it. So each which hopping amplitude is rescaled as a function of the connectivity of both sides. Okay. The way that they, it is rescaled is similar to the one that it was done in the graph and the wheel, in the, in the wheel and star graphs, by the square root of the connectivity. Okay, thanks. But the, the, the detail you can see in, the, in this paper. Mm -hmm. And after, but no, the, the, the spectral dimensionality is fixed, it's 3.74, and we have no way to, to investigate how the transition or the characteristics of the transition change with the dimensionality. To do that, we, we consider the, this other network, hierarchical network, that is called the diamond lattices. The diamond lattices is even easier to, to construct. You start with a couple of singly connected sites and you change the single connection by a set of connections intermediated by a new site. So you just substitute this link here by a set of uh, Q, Q, in, Q new uh, connections, but intermediated by this new site. So Q here is a number of uh, uh, new uh, connections here. The, the, the plot here is shown for Q equals to five. You have five new ways to connect these two external sites, but the connection now is intermediated by a new one. So, and you continue to do this. So for each now, each new connection here, now you substitute by Q new connections intermediated by a new site and go, and go on and on. So the spectral dimensionality of this kind of uh, diamond lattices can be also analytically computed. And it depends on the number of legs that you introduce here. So the spectral dimensionality is given by this simple expression. So if the, if the number of legs that, that you introduce is two, for example, this di spectral dimensionality is two. So if you have just two legs here, the spectral dimensionality is two and you have no, no Bose-Einstein condensation. But if you put three, four, five new legs, the spectral dimensionality is higher than two and a Bose-Einstein condensation takes place. And in particular, if Q is above eight, the spectral dimensionality is above four, and above four means mean field-like behavior. So we can now play with this Q parameter, the number of legs, to have mean field-like transition and non-mean field-like transition. So here's a, an example for, uh, of the specific heat for different values of this parameter Q. So for Q larger than eight, 
the mean field, the, the specific heat is discontinuous at the transition, as in mean field. If it's slightly below 80, the mean field exponent is negative, mas negative, but just slightly below zero. And the specific heat has a kink singularity. And if Q is closer to two, for example, Q equals to three, the specific heat has, if it has some singularity, it is hidden in higher order derivative. And you can even see where is the critical point just looking at the specific heat. You have to look at the, the order parameter itself to see the transition. So you can see the transition looking at the order parameter, but if you look at the correlation at the specific heat, this transition is not much visible. This is a feature related to the fact that the, the, the specific heat critical exponent is well, well negative. And the singularity will only become evident if you do higher order derivatives of the specific heat. So having this in mind, let me return to the main presentation. We uh, started the re more recently, bef before the pandemic, this tight binding one-dimensional tight binding model with power law decay in hopping amplitudes. So we consider this a one-dimensional chain okay, and a tight binding model in a one-dimensional chain, but on which the hopping amplitude connecting two sides N and M decay as a power law of the distance between the, the two sides. So this power law exponent alpha can be continuously, continuously tuned and we can analytically obtain the dispersion relation as a series. And what we find is that if this exponent alpha is up above two, the spectral dimension is one. So if the, the hopping amplitude decays faster than quadratically, the spectral dimensionality is one. So the, the system is typically one dimensional. But if this exponent is, is below two, the spectral dimensionality depends on alpha and grows as alpha decreases and, can be, and becomes infinite when alpha goes to one. And it becomes two exactly two if alpha equals to i believe three three halves so for alpha between three halves and one you will find a uh, bose einstein condensation with exponents critical exponents that can be continuously tuned by tuning this power law exponent alpha and I would like to use a couple more of minutes to just discuss the difference between having an effective dimensionality below four, so below the mean field uh, critical dimension that is four and above four. So below four, the, we know that the order parameter shall obey what we call a single parameter uh, finite size scaling hypothesis. And using this as hypothesis, we can compute the uh, critical exponents for the order parameter, beta, and for the correlation length. I will pass this more first. So we, we use this kind of uh, finite size scaling hypothesis to locate the critical temperature and to compute the critical exponents. And here is a, just a data collapse of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, order parameter data 
data obtained from different uh, uh, chain sizes. But if you have a spectral dimensionality that's above four, finite size scaling has to be done with much more care because the single parameter scale has to be adapted due to the presence of what we call in an ir irrelevant but dangerous scale. Well, I, an irrelevant but a dangerous parameter. The finite size scaling of the order parameter has to be changed because when we have when we are at the critical temperature, this scaling function we will scale with the system size due to this relevant scaling variable. So the order parameter, for example, does not does not go to zero with the exponent that's beta over nu. It's a different exponent when you do finite size scaling. So what is this u? Parameter? U is a, is a, a, a parameter of the model Hamiltonian. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Any parameter of the model Hamiltonian. The important thing is that, uh, that when you are with a dimension that's above 4, this uh, scaling variable here goes to 0, and the own function age goes to 0. So besides this scaling behavior of the order parameter that depends on the system size with the exponent beta over nu, it will appear a second contribution, a finite size contribution. So the way that the order parameter goes to zero as a function of the system size is not simply governed by this critical exponent ratio, but you have to introduce this correction to scale. I have a question about this. Yes. So is this a uh, uh, second scaling parameter that appears for dimensions higher than four also appearing if I do a, a simple model for like, uh, as you were discussing in your first slide, so you, you discussed the case of dimension one, two, three. So if I do the same calculation for a dimension above four, would this appear also, or this is specific to your model with this effective dimensionality above four? Oh, you have a good question. It is always there. So if your model has a dimension that's above the upper critical dimension, that in this case is d equal to 4, when you do finite size scaling, you have always to include this term. Okay, even if I do, for example, a gas uh, trapped in a... Yeah, if you do, if you do an easy model in five dimensions. Yeah, okay. I is a model in five dimensions. If you are going to do finite size scaling, you have to consider this term. Okay, I guess in a five in a five dimension uh, five harmonic dimension, state. Yes. Or... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I, we did the the usual uh, scaling analysis. I will skip it because I I took too much of your time already. And uh, here is the how the critical temperature depends on the effective spectral dimension and the, our results for the critical exponent is above and below the, the, the upper critical dimension. So the difference between the dots that we have here from our numerics and these straight lines here, the difference is just because near the the upper critical dimension, the d, d equals to four, we have what they what they call logarithmic corrections to the scale, and so the numerical estimates of the critical exponents are a little bit uh, uh, contaminated. Here, the specific heat also above the upper critical dimension, it is discontinuous at the transition. Just below the upper critical dimension. The specific heat has a kink singularity. It's continuous, but the, the first derivative is discontinuous. And when the effective dimension is close to two, the specific heat appears as a smooth function, but it's not smooth. The, the, the problem is that the singularity is hidden in high order derivatives. 
that's that graphically is not very easy to to identify. So summarizing this this this, this final part, we so we can explore these tight bind models with power law decay in Hopkins to be able to control and to tune in the effective uh, spectral dimensionality to study the, the Bose-Einstein condensation of the ideal gas. And what we have uh, explicitly shown in this uh, study is that you have to have much care when doing finite size scaling analysis above the upper critical dimension, you have to take it, uh, into account this uh, dangerous, irrelevant scale, scale correction. And when you are below this upper critical dimension, but the critical exponent associated with the specific heat is, is negative, highly negative, you have to, to be care when analyzing for, uh, specific heat data to locate the, the transition. I, I already saw in the literature some works that look at the specific heat curve numerically obtained and do not see any singularity to, to state that the system has no transition, no transition at finite temperature. This is a very dangerous statement because the singularity in the specific heat can be hidden in higher order derivatives. So it's not safe to use the specific heat curve to, to decide if there is or there is not a transition at, at finite temperature. Not the for not even for the ideal Bose gas uh, condensation, but in any uh, system presenting a uh, critical phenomena. Specific heat is not a safe quantity to look unless it has explicitly a singularity. If you, if you see the singularity, the transition is there. But if you do not see the singularity, it does not mean, does not mean that there is no transition. So with this, I close my, my talk and then thank you for your patience with this quite long uh, colloquium. And uh, I return the, for, to, to Roman for any further question that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcelo, for the very nice uh, talk. Are there some uh, more questions? So, uh, I was wondering uh, how you define actually, uh, but this is connected to a question before, how you define the dimension uh, of your system. Uh, I mean, how you can have uh, higher or the dimensional system. Uh, for example, when you have your wheel graph, uh, if you're able to engineer uh, interactions uh, only as a, like a wheel, this uh, effectively defines you a higher dimensional system? Yes, yes. The, the dimension that we, I'm, uh, we define in, the, in these works is what we call the spectral dimension. So we look at the behavior of the density of states at the bottom of the energy band. So, and the exponent, the singularity that we have at the bottom of the energy band is, a, is power law-like. And the exponent of this power law is related to this spectral dimension. So it's not a geometric dimension of the network. It's the spectral dimension. This dimension just gives what, how is how the density of states behaves at the bottom of the energy band? Okay, but uh, let's 
Imagine I have a cubic uh, lattice with a nearest neighbor time binding uh, model. In general, do I expect that my spectral dimension will be free, or is it? Uh, I mean, free. is it? It will be free. It will be okay. free. But if you put the disorder, if you put disorder in three dimension, so this singularity is rounded. You develop uh, leaf sheet tails. And the spectral dimensionality now is infinite. Okay. But the geometric dimensionality remains three. Um, okay. So, so, mm -hmm. so the dimensionality that I'm that I'm talking about is the, is the dimensionality associated with the energy spectrum. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, this is a. Uh... Interesting. Okay, thanks. So, have you considered uh, contact interaction or other types of interactions in your sense, or are you just considering always the ideal case? Until now, just the ideal case. So, we we have tried it with a colleague from from Federal University of Sergipe to start to include interactions in this in the in this Bose gas. In the star graph, that was the one that we could do. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Was the one that we could do the simplest analytical uh, calculation. But uh, but uh, the interactions the interactions make makes the make this the the analytical work very hard, and you you we could not advance much. I see. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>